And I remember that dementia described as people just not making sense. Like Correct. They, they just, people start not making sense. They get the dermatitis, they get the diarrhea, which sounds like a lot of our aging population. Yeah. Yeah. It was that like lack of mental clarity, right? But usually mm -hmm. with a mood component that was overlaid with it. And what you would tend to see with most things that would be vitamin deficiencies is when there's not an outright deficiency but not an optimal amount, you have lesser degrees of some of those same types of issues going on. So you, you tend to, what we tend to see at Qualia when people have been in our studies on the Qualia NAD Plus product is the areas that most commonly we've seen improve the most are feelings of energy, mood, mental clarity, you know, the same category of things that you, you tend to see if in a deficiency go really, really haywire. That's awesome. Yeah, because this is, I think B vitamin deficiencies across the board are so prevalent. And as some of these get used up when we're in stress state. Some of the Bs get used up in the face of toxicity. I mean, it's just this general world we live in. And I think we're all running pretty low B vitamin and we can get them from animal foods and from other sources. But I think that the deficiency state or the state of just not having optimal, it's, it's not even deficiency, it's just optimizing the cell, mm -hmm. right? Like optimizing the individual. Sometimes we can talk about like RDAs and all of that, but I'm less interested. And I know you as an naturopathic doctor are too. It's like, we're just trying to get people back to homeostasis and yeah. whatever they need, they need. And I think this is a big one. We only really learned about it, I think for the most part, aside from that, that frank deficiency state was flushing niacin in the case of cardiovascular support. And so like this whole new world of longevity and anti-aging, like th this is all newer. Yeah. The other where area, well, there's many more, but flushing niacin has always been part of the, um, the sauna detox yep. protocol with the, that Scientology has used, which is one of the more studied types of de detox actually. Um, and, you know, the idea behind that is that the flushing niacin works in a certain way on fat cells. It tends to mobilize things that were stored there including we store most of the fat soluble toxins, obviously there. So that's why I said, in, in addition to the NAD role, that these different forms also have slight unique roles that they play. And one is, um, this was also a recent Nestle study, but it was, um, they were trying to figure out if any of these types of vitamin B3 or the NAD precursors could increase the function of the stem cells in muscles, which are called satellite cells, muscle satellite cells. Mm -hmm. And what they found was that um, niacinamide worked, but NR didn't. And it was because NAD wasn't involved. Niacinamide was used in a completely different way that science hadn't known about before that didn't involve being made into NAD first. Since NR is made into NAD slightly better and easier than niacinamide, it wasn't nearly as good for this muscle stem cell role as niacinamide was. So, um, you know, which I thought was super cool. And it made me like very pleased that we have both in, you know, um, what I would think of as amounts that help optimize function in qualia NAD+. Yes, that's the key, optimizing function. So we talked about frank deficiency, which is obviously not the norm, but what are some signs of just waning NAD levels as we age? Like, can say someone like myself, I'm 50 years old. What, what are some of the more common symptoms that we're seeing or just presentations? And then how does that reflect into anti-aging or yeah, longevity? I mean, um, let's like touch first on the, the longevity piece and then we'll go like backtrack into um, some clues maybe that you could need more. But it, in a general sense, the there's a framework called the hallmarks of aging that's used a lot in longevity and hallmarks of aging means there's certain characteristics and there's 12 of them currently that are used that whether scientists are looking at a mouse or a monkey or a human we would have in common as we get older and these are things like mitochondria dysfunction and um, dna having issues replicating correctly and telomeres becoming shorter and stem cells being exhausted. Um, another one is dysbiosis, which has to do with kind of the health and integrity of our gut. Um, another one's inflammaging is how we would usually refer to it. But that low level inflammation that gradually gets more and more with the passing of time in all organisms. 
And so NAD has been connected to all 12 of those, some much more strongly than others. So like as an example, obviously you had mentioned earlier, Krebs cycle that takes place in mitochondria. NAD is critical for helping to counter that mitochondrial dysfunction. I mentioned its role in the enzymes that repair DNA, right? So it's really critical in that one as well. This um, new role of niacinamide in, in muscle stem cells is like, oh, like there's a connection now with, with not necessarily NAD, but it's precursor molecules with stem cells. And so there's a strong case to be made that we need NAD to counter all of these hallmarks of aging. And one of the other things that then came about from research is when they investigate, whether it's humans or other animals, the levels of NAD decrease in our tissues with age. So not only do we need it, but it just turns out that as we get older, we have much less in our tissues and cells where we need it to counter aging than we did when we were younger. So that that's like, there's many more nuances to that, but that's the main story that it's super important for keeping us healthy as we get older. And for whatever reason, our cells aren't very good at making enough of it. And so there was a study, I think I saw it about three months ago, and it looked at um, compared NAD levels in red blood cells at different ages. And then with people that were either, these were either sedentary people, high level runners, um, some of the runners were long distance, some were more sprinters, and then looked at how NAD levels um, were over time. And no surprise, the exercises had, for whatever age they were at, much higher levels of NAD than the sedentary folks. The and runners the, had higher levels. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the, the sprinters actually higher than the long distance runners in this particular study. But even within those, it was like a line down over time with age. So they stayed higher, but they still went down. So exercise was was useful, but it didn't it didn't counteract all the declines with aging that happened with NAD. Wow. So why do you think it goes down over time? Is it malnourishment? Is it lack of precursors or? So I think there's a f multiple different reasons, but one would be um, tie in with inflammation. So the there's another NAD dependent or NAD consuming enzyme called CD38. For listeners, just think of it as like a chronic inflammation enzyme. And that's a huge devourer of the NAD molecule as we get older. And some, some animal evidence would indicate on its own that that's sufficient to cause NAD levels to go down as we get older. But just that chronic inflammation piece. Um, we talked about zombie cells the last time I was on. So senescent cells, it turns out, you know, as we talked about then accumulate more and more in our tissues as we get older and they become big devourers of NAD. So they, they kind of rob NAD from their local ecosystem and devour it as well. So you, we have those two pieces. Um, my guess is that some's probably dietary when you start to get to extremes of aging, right? Because people sometimes just don't make as healthy a food, you know, as they get older compared to what they might've had access to younger. And then some part is for sure, we're less efficient at turning the things like flushing niacin or NR into NAD. The, the enzymes that do the work, they don't work as well as we get older. 